All right, so let's take a look at the 2023 AP Physics 1 released free response questions. There are no official solutions out. Those don't come out until well after the scores are released. So these are my best guess at solutions. If I have any mistakes, I will put them as corrections as a pinned comment in the video below. So we have a cart on a horizontal surface is attracted to a spring. The other end of the spring is attached to a wall. The cart is initially held at rest. So I'm going to write V equals zero there. When the cart is released, the system consisting of the cart and the spring oscillates between the positions. So this is a harmonic motion. Figure two shows the kinetic energy of the cart spring system as a function of the system's potential energy. Frictional forces are negligible. So it's just going to oscillate between there. On the graph of kinetic energy versus potential energy, um, the values for the x-intercept and y-intercept are the same. Briefly explain why this is true using physics principles. So. What does the x-intercept represent? What you would have to explain here is the x-intercept is when the potential energy is zero, then the kinetic energy is four joules. And here it's the other way. When the kinetic energy is zero, the potential energy is four joules. Now, why is this true? Is because for the cart spring system, <clears throat> energy is conserved, is conserved. So if it is conserved, that means the energy at every point in time is always the same. And so you would say at, you know, the x-intercept, and I would make that connection there. What the what does the x-intercept represent is when all of the energy is kinetic energy, which is 4 joules, and at the y-intercept is when all of the energy is potential energy. is potential energy. Oh, do I have that backwards? Sorry, x-intercept is, oh, sorry, let's make this y. y-intercept is where it's all kinetic energy. x-intercept, this is the x-intercept, this is the y-intercept, where it's all potential energy, which is four joules. There's no loss in energy, no loss in energy. Why would there no loss in energy? If you wanted to explain that, just in just as a learning point, uh, there's no external work being done on the system. That's why. All right, when the cart is at moment plus L, momentarily at rest, okay, so the V is equal to zero, block is dropped onto the cart, as shown in figure three, the block sticks to the cart, and the block cart system continues to oscillate between negative L plus L, the masses of the cart and M0 and M3, M0, respectively. The frequency of oscillation before the block is dropped is F1, the frequency of oscillation after the block is dropped is F2, calculate the numerical value. So here, we know the period is related, because if we're asking about the frequency, we know frequency is one over the period, right? So the period is gonna be, you know, two pi root m over k. By attaching this other block, I've now increased the mass of this. So you could say t1 is gonna be two pi root m zero over k, and then t2, once I've added the th that block, is gonna be two pi root four m zero over k. And they want a numerical value, so it can't have any uh, variables in it. So really, if I do F2 over F1 is the same as, because it's reciprocal, it's like one over, it's gonna be T1 over T2. T1 is this guy right here, two pi root M0 over K. This is two pi root four M0 over K. Okay, the two pi's cancel, the K's cancel, and even the M zeros cancel, so I get, um, one over the square root of four is one half. And let me just make sure that that makes sense. The period is gonna be longer now that you've added that additional mass on there. So the frequency is going to be bigger period, smaller frequency. So F2 over F1 is gonna be smaller. Yeah, okay, one half, that makes sense. The dashed line in the figure shows the kinetic energy K versus potential energy of the block cart spring system after the block is dropped into the cart. The graph is identical to the graph shown in figure two for the cart spring system before the block is dropped on the car. Briefly explain why the two graphs may have the same using physics principles. Um, well, at the moment that we're dropped, at the, so at the, very, at the very moment we're dropped right here, all the energy is spring potential energy. So at this moment right here, the energy is gonna be one half kx squared, all spring potential energy at this point, right? Because the velocity is zero, there's no kinetic energy happening right when you place that block on. So once you've placed that block on or dropped it onto there, right, the spring potential energy hasn't changed. Thus, the total energy of the system is going to be the same. So I would say when it's dropped, when dropped, 
all energy is potential energy, which is 1 half kx squared, kl squared. The block colliding collision does not change this, change the potential energy. Or you could also say when the brought in the kinetic energy is zero, does not change the potential energy, thus the total energy of the system is still the same. Okay. All right. After the block is dropped onto the cart, consider system consists only of the cart and the spring. Okay, so like we're just talking about just this thing and not the block we just added onto it. On figure four, sketch a solid line that shows the kin kinetic energy. This is figure four of the system that consists of the cart and the spring, but not the block after the block is dropped onto the cart. Okay, so um, if we have the cart and the spring, we're still gonna end up with, we're still gonna start here at four joules. The thing is, is then we're gonna convert, and what you're gonna notice is, so at the, at the max, when we have kinetic energy max, if you think about the entire system, you're gonna have one half 4m zero v squared, right? That's gonna equal four joules. Right, because that's 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 what you that's what you have on this dot here, and that consists of the kinetic energy of both the blocks and the carts. However, basically you're going to have the three m zero have its own energy, and you're going to have the cart have its own energy, right? And so if so, this energy has to be three times as much. So that means at the maximum kinetic energy, if you consider the block, the block is going to have three x the energy that this guy's gonna have. So it's gonna be split into three joules and one joule, okay, between these two. So that's the exchange. Like, so basically one joule will correspond to the kinetic energy of the cart and the remaining three joules will correspond to the, the kinetic energy of the block there because it's three times the mass, one half mv squared is gonna have three times the energy. So that's what you should expect, a straight line from there to there. Okay, uh, all right, so that was the first one.